Previously, on the way of the kings of the east, we saw how the wisdom of Solomon exceeded the wisdom of the men or the kings of the east. We learned that Noah's grandson, Cush, fathered Nimrod. Remember, Nimrod was not a son of Cush, but a system of deception to turn people against the laws of Yahweh. This is done subtly through institutes of higher learning. Although they teach very few beneficial things, at the same time they teach students to rebel against Yahweh. This brings about Babylon, which means confusion. The lust for wealth and power, with the purpose of getting rich in this lifetime, is a major recruiting method for enticing people to enter these institutes of higher learning. The Tower of Babel represents this system and is widely seen on school and college campuses today as part of their architecture. The Tower of Babel is also represented in government buildings around the world. All nations continue to teach and practice war while ever searching for peace. This is the same mark that Cain received. The characteristic of these governments is a mixture of politics and religion. As the late Malachi Martin, author of The Keys of This Blood, stated, Politics without spirituality, without religion, is no politics, and religion without politics is no religion. People have been deceived into believing that these institutes of higher learning, as well as our governmental systems, have all the answers to the world's problems. Greed and lust has not only led to wars where one country invades another to take their resources and wealth, but has also led to the defilement of mankind's food supply. The more they reject Yahweh, the more the confusion grows and the worse problems become. All religious, political, and military leaders are affected by this system. The cumulative result is that rational decisions cannot be made. The great apostle Shaul was a Roman soldier that Yahweh converted. He was from the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew and a Pharisee, a Roman citizen born in Tarsus of Cilicia, brought up at the feet of Gamaliel. Keep these key scriptural facts about the apostle Shaul in mind as we continue in our study. Shaul was from the tribe of Benjamin. Genesis 49 gives us some interesting insight into the characteristics of the different tribes, including the tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin is a ravenous wolf. In the morning he devours the foe, and in the evening he divides the plunder. Genesis 49, 27. We also see violent characteristics shown in the tribes of Simeon and Levi. Simeon and Levi are brothers. Their swords are weapons of violence. Let me not enter into their council. Let not my glory be jointed to their assembly. For in anger they killed a man, and for their pleasure they hamstrung an ox. Cursed be their anger, so fierce, in their fury so cruel. I will scatter them in Yaakov, and disperse them throughout Israel. In other words, they are going to be scattered among the Benjaminites and others who left the teachings of Yahweh. This bloodline, the genes, are going to be scattered into the others. 
Shaul was also a Pharisee. Circumcised on the eighth day, of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee. Philippians 3, 5 Remember Yahshua's warning to his apostles. I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, and they are going to kill you. Speaking of the Sadducees, Essenes, and Pharisees. Shaul, who was of the tribe of Menuhin, was a Pharisee doing the work of a Pharisee, which was chasing down House of Yahweh members and killing them and anyone else who wanted to live by the written laws of Yahweh. As we learned previously, during the days of the prophet Samuel, the elders rejected the righteous laws of Yahweh and chose to follow their own made-up laws, just like the surrounding nations. The Pharisees would not live by the written law, so what were they keeping? They were teaching traditions of men. They were teaching the Talmud. This is what Shaul was teaching and enforcing before his conversion. He pursued and persecuted the way of Yahweh to the death, binding both men and women and delivering them into prison. The high priest and the whole council of elders were behind this practice and actually encouraging Shaul to do this. Shaul had letters from them to go to Damascus to bring the believers back to Jerusalem to be punished. Shaul was present when Stephen was stoned, Acts 6, 8, and 26. Shaul states that before his conversion to the way of Yahweh, he was a blasphemer. The scriptures show that blasphemers are those who come against the name or the authority of Yahweh. The Pharisees, Essenes, and some of the Sadducees spoke against the use of the name of Yahweh. History shows that they changed the laws and said, You cannot follow the written laws. You must follow our interpretations or traditions. Remember Yahshua's statement, you make the law of Yahweh of none effect by your traditions. One such tradition regarding the use of the name of Yahweh has recently resurfaced. On August 13, 2008, the Vatican issued a directive stating that the name of Yahweh should not be used in Catholic songs, prayers, or at Catholic Masses. The article also states, apart from a motive of a purely philological order, there is also that of remaining faithful to the Church's tradition from the beginning that the sacred Tetragrammaton was never pronounced in the Christian context nor translated into any of the languages into which the Bible was translated. Notice their reason for the directive was not because the scripture prohibits the use of the name Yahweh. In fact, we are told throughout the scriptures to call upon the name of Yahweh to seek the place that Yahweh has chosen to place his name and to go to that place and learn how to reverence Yahweh. The article continues. In place of the name of God, pious Hebrews used the four-letter tetragrammaton YHWH or substituted the terms Adonai or the Lord. The first Christians continued this practice, the Vatican notes. This is an effort to cause the people to forget the name of Yahweh for Baal. Baal is a common Canaanite word for Lord. Acts shows that this was not new. History shows that the Catholic Church is the one who changed the laws. That makes them the Pharisees that changed the law. They changed their name to Universal or Catholic, but they admit they changed the laws fulfilling the prophecy of Daniel chapter 7 which makes them what used to be Pharisees, but now they're the mystery religion. This is the reason that they moved their headquarters from Jerusalem to Rome, hoping that under disguise, no one would find out. To most, it's a mystery how Rome came about. Mythology states that two brothers, Romulus and Ramus were drug off into the forest and raised by a she-wolf after the death of their mother. 
They were the ones that built Rome, and later one of them killed the other. The violence is the only part of this story that fits the truth. The truth about Rome is this. The tribe of Benjamin spread out. There were many other tribes that joined them because they built a city, and they, after Cush, built institutes of learning. They had them throughout Israel. In fact, that is what Solomon allowed to be set up in his lifetime. The same gods that they are worshipping now were set up to be worshipped in Israel under King Solomon at that time. Shaul was trained in a school of advanced learning, or institute of higher learning. But since some were hardened and would not believe, but spoke evil about the way of Yahweh before the multitudes, he separated himself from them, taking the disciples with him. But every day he reasoned with them at the school of Tyrannus. Acts 19, 9. The authoritative sources also show that the word Tyrannus can be used to characterize a person, thing, or teaching. Remember Genesis chapter 10, verse 8 through 9? Cush fathered Nimrod. He fathered rebellion. He, or it, was a tyrant who deceived, who brought forth deception. Rather than the name of a man, Nimrod was a system or an institution a school of learning, kept by the more celebrated Rabbins. The Apostle Shaul attended the school of Tyrannus, which means tyrant. That is, this is what they teach you to be. Gamaliel was a teacher of one of these institutes of higher learning. Authoritative and historical sources show that Gamaliel, who taught the Apostle Shaul, was the great-grandson of the great Hillel and himself a celebrated doctor of the law, not of the laws of Yahweh, not of the laws of the prophets, but of their traditions, the Talmud. His learning was so eminent because he was taught in these schools of higher learning by these great rabbin, and his character was so revered that he is one of the seven among the Jewish doctors to be honored with the title Rabban. Clark's commentary states, that Gamaliel was the Apostle Shaul's master. Master means Lord. The word master comes from the word Rabban, rendered as master of kings and lords of their subjects, the kings of the east. Isaiah chapter 26 was written in 712 BCE. O Yahweh our Father, add a name, lords and gods ruled over us instead of you alone. Isaiah 26, 23. Who were these Adonim lords and gods? They weren't called Pharisees at that time, but they became to be known as Pharisees in the second volume of the scriptures. Now their character is called universal. This is the same thing that Cush brought forth in the Institutes of Higher Learning, which they have all over the world now, teaching this doctrine and not the laws of Yahweh. They pretend to teach salvation using these same traditions taught to them in the Talmud. This is exactly what was taught to the children of Israel when the Pharisees and Sadducees had their armies take them into Babylon and try to retrain them and get rid of the great culture that Yahweh had given them through his laws, statutes, and judgments. The Apostle Shaul, who was once a tyrant and a severe persecutor of those who would teach and live by the laws of Yahweh, was converted by Yahweh and became one of the great teachers of Yahweh's law. But others continued the persecution until no true followers of Yahweh were left. How did this take place? Who led this crusade against the believers? And how did he manage to carry out one of the greatest deceptions of all time? You will be shocked at what you learn next time as we continue examining the way of the kings of the East.